interstitial Lyme disease uh, is a, a rare but not uncommon disease of scarring or inflammation that occurs in a space or potential space between the alveoli and the capillaries or blood vessels. So this is a unique area that's very important for gas exchange to occur and especially oxygenation. Interstitial Lyme disease is becoming more prevalent uh, with time. We're probably uh, diagnosing it more often as we have better imaging modalities that are picking up more subtle interstitial changes in patients. There are over 200 different interstitial lung diseases that are out there. So as we're trying to uh, evaluate and diagnose a patient with a particular interstitial lung disease, we're trying to be detectives and getting clues from the history, physical, and laboratory and imaging assessment um, along with uh, clues from the family and the patient and their family histories and trying to put the pieces together to be able to formulate a diagnosis as best we can. So progressive fibrosing interstitial lung disease is describing an interstitial lung disease that, um, as the name would suggest, has progressive features of fibrosis over time. So the, the classic progressive fibrosing interstitial lung disease would be the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Um, this is kind of the, the classic one that is associated with progressive fibrosis. However, there are other subsets of interstitial lung disease that also share some similar characteristics in that they will go on to have progressive fibrosis. So in Patients with autoimmune disease, for example, and I'll use scleroderma as that's probably one of the most frequent autoimmune diseases that we do um, see interstitial lung disease in the context of. There will be a subset of patients that have interstitial lung disease that may not progress, but then there's also the subset of, of patients with interstitial lung disease that will progress. So the ones that are developing um, progressive fibrosis by high resolution CT, as well as uh, increasing restrictive lung disease by pulmonary function testing. Um, these are sort of the category of patients that um, can be you know, defined or, or thought about in the, in the sense that they are a progressive fibrosing lung disease. So idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, uh, that is a lung disease in which uh, has a progressive fibrosing phenotype but it's not associated or, or driven by perhaps an autoimmune process or any other exposures such as uh, uh, environmental exposures or precipitated by any other really features. It's occurring as it would suggest idiopathically. So there's not an underlying uh, driver for the lung disease that can be identified by history. Um, and so, it, it, it kind of is this, this group um, uh, of lung diseases, again, that shows this progressive fibrosis, um, and we, we don't have necessarily an underlying cause for it. Systemic sclerosis with interstitial lung disease can be somewhat, it, it can change by definition. So if we're looking strictly at um, whether there's interstitial lung disease by high resolution CT, um, we can actually see that there may be some bi-basal or interstitial changes on high-res CT in about uh, 65 to 90 percent of patients depending on the subset of patients that we're looking at. However, not all interstitial lung disease is going to progress to causing physiologic changes. So there are patients that we can see a little bit of bibasal or interstitial fibrosis, but we may not see any changes on pulmonary function testing. Um, so on pulmonary function testing, um, this, is, this is really uh, helping us understand what physiologic lung changes are being caused by the actual fibrosis itself. Pulmonologists are key and central figures in the uh, management and diagnosis of interstitial lung disease. Other key players in the diagnosis uh, and ultimate uh, uh, team players in the management are primary care physicians because they may be the first ones to actually pick up the diagnosis, find the interstitial lung disease, and coordinate the care with the local pulmonologist or uh, interstitial lung disease center. 
So in patients with interstitial lung disease that are coming in for perhaps this is their initial evaluation, um, rheumatologists will see these patients often in the context of either one, a question of whether they might have an autoimmune disease underlying the um, interstitial lung disease. Um, sometimes they will come in in the setting of having some positive autoantibodies, and the rheumatologist is, is again asked to, to determine whether they may be an underlying autoimmune disease that may be driving some of the interstitial lung disease process. This is particularly important as there are some patients um, that may have a, a pattern of disease that we call nonspecific interstitial pneumonitis. And these patients, um, if, if it's in the context of an autoimmune disease, may respond to some uh, immunosuppressant therapies. 